Steinberger, look at those tuners. Look at that crazy stamp on those tuners. Look at this crazy thing. Look at this ball here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming down there. Let me tell you something. Look at the precision. You will never find dots more precise on any instrument than on a Ned Steinberger instrument. This is legit. Look at this right here. It's a crazy thing about this particular guitar. And yes, I put that sticker on there a long time ago. This is a special guitar. Used to have a lot of signatures that got worn off, which pissed me off, but it's a different story. But anyways, this guitar is a Steinberger with an actual headstock. Reverse, which makes it even that much cooler. But these tuners right here are the absolute jam. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and restore this. And this guitar is the cheater's instrument of all time because the action is so low and it's so precise and the intonation is so perfect, it doesn't take anything to play this thing. So this particular guitar is magical. So we have the pickups taken out, EMG 89. IBs. Both of them. They're identical. These pickups are not active pickups. It's the preamp that makes these pickups active. Um, so you could have DiMarzio's and the circuit. It would plug right into the same thing. You could do that kind of stuff, but they've designed it around that particular model that they do this. So you can have passive EMGs. They even make them EMG selects, whatever. They don't sound that great, but when you think about the amount of technology that's in that circuit board right there, that's where the money is. That's where the amount of insane technology in building is just right here. Other than that, yeah, it's a guitar. It's gonna sound like a certain thing. But one thing I've always said, you know, when you think about an EMG, you don't, you don't see humbucker single humbucker very often. It's very rare. Uh, most of the Metallica guitars, they're dual humbuckers. They have three-way switches. They don't do very much. This thing has um, a split right here, which gives it essentially nine tones, because if you have this, you have one position, two positions, because it splits that. When you have it in this position, you have a full and, you know, a middle pickup. But then you have a single coil, single coil, so you have another position. Then you have that position, and then this. So it's actually nine different intentional sounds. This right here, as you can see how it kind of snaps to a position, okay? So this is like non-boosted, and then this is a treble boost, and then it's a treble bleed. So you have all those different types of things, and it's just a regular volume, but this thing is just, the clean tones on this particular guitar are something you wouldn't associate with saying EMG pickups have a great clean tone. This guitar has one of the prettiest clean tones of all time. But anyways, that's just a little section of the guts. We'll uh, pull off the neck, see what it actually has stamped, and, uh, and we'll start to get to restoring it. It might be a little intimidating to people if they were trying to take it back and put it together, because I doubt I'd find any schematics online about this one readily available. So look at that shit. <laughs> I mean, seriously. If this was disconnected, I have no freaking clue how I would be able to reconnect all this stuff right here. So um, I got to be very careful when I take this apart for the sake of this video. But uh, yeah, that's some shenanigans. Somebody put that together and knew exactly what they're doing because they had blue, orange, white, yellow, green, freaking teal, whatever they call it. They've got a lot of different things going on in here. They can't just use red, black, white, and yellow. So um, anyways... Those are the housings for the knobs, and they are precisionly drilled. Look at this. This whole circuit board, okay, contains the volume knobs that are absolutely drilled into the body. I'm just saying for reals, if you were to try to spec this thing out and replace this stuff, you could not do it. This thing was designed to be a spaceship. I'm sorry, but those knobs literally go through the holes at the exact precision amount that this circuit board was created for. You are not going to be able to do any modifications to this guitar. You'd have to rip this thing out, put in stupid, easy 
dumb electronics, just just you know, like volume pot, you know, Demarzio pickups, whatever. You know, not to say anything wrong with the Demarzio, not saying anything. I'm just saying, but look at that. You would think that this thing is totally easy to mod, but you would be absolutely stupid, stupid wrong. Look at that precision. Oh, what a guitar. Just to talk about this tremolo a little bit, get some light on it. It's actually pretty cool, as you can see. It looks like it's wrong, but no, it's offset. This is way back in the day before they started doing fan frets. So this is actually really a unique piece. And let me tell you something, this thing is as solid as it gets. I mean, when you're talking about over-engineered, they even have little Allen holes to crimp down on the actual uh, springs just to make sure they stay in place. So you get your screws right here that hold this base plate in there for the strings. It's offset, obviously, for intonation purposes. These are the intonation screws, which are also offset. And um, there are no other tangs or anything that hold them in place. There's an intonation... Or no, I'm sorry. There's just a little screw that just basically clamps down, probably, you know, just, you know, tighten the, you know, from swinging if you want to swing loose or if you want it to be absolutely in place when you're using it and stuff like that. So he thought of that. Um, there's some little strange little thing right here. It's... I don't really have any idea what this is. I mean, you can see it. It's there. But I don't know exactly what it does. Hmm. Interesting. But anyways, it's there. And maybe it's a, you know, for keeping all the uh, uh, pieces in line. And maybe that's just exactly what it is. So I kept these in order. And if you look, the saddles are the same. But the radius is actually in the groove. So that actually explains a lot. That is incredible precision when you really think about it. Just designing these things the way that they did. That's specifically for an E string, for a high E string, and that's for a low E string, and that's for a G string. They absolutely made that specifically for these particular things. So, I mean, it's a work of art. Anything Steinberger is just, you know, pre-Gibson. It's just ridiculously over-engineered. It's just a gorgeous piece of metal, you know. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, so you can see it. That's how it's designed. This little peg probably absolutely has a purpose. So I'll go ahead and put it back together. Now this is clean. And to the answer of that question of what that little thing was for, it absolutely is to keep this precisely aligned. Just that little tiny thing. Just a little bit of nub. Absolutely perfect. It's a fantastic design. So we got this off, and um, it does look like they had a couple of aluminum plates just to work as a shim. Um, so this was on the uh, low side. So I'm going to keep this separate. Make sure. And then you got this guy. Not sure exactly how that works. I got this kind of like roller type deal right here, but I don't know if that. Yeah, it does come off. Make sure we don't screw this up. Ooh. It's interesting. So these pieces are loose. Why would they come out just like that? Ooh, I don't want to get these things out of order. There's not too many manuals that actually figure that out. Okay, so. Interesting. They look like they're just about the same. But that's pretty cool. So that's how that, uh, that mechanism works. I guess, imagine you could take this apart. I don't know if it's pressed together, I think it is. Maybe it's just clamped or maybe it slides. I don't want to mess with it too much, but <clears throat> anyways, well, that's, that's the, uh, that's the pieces. It looks like that's three, one, 
got some strange markings on them. You can see this has got like a little symbol. Like that. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But they do have some markings on them. Oh, okay. I get it now. Yeah, they are definitely formed for a reason. So you can actually see there's like a marking where it looks looks like one, two, and three, and then you see like a single line, or just you know like a dual line here, and then a single line, then there's no lines. So that would mean that these would be the the D and the G, which is the meet you know the middle stuff like that, and then you got the low the high B, oh, that's just basically B, and then that's the A, and then that would be the low E, and the high E. So there is a pattern. So when they do make these, you know exactly which height they are. That's pretty cool. Get another genius design. I'm just gonna clean and polish those things up a little bit and we'll put it back together. So this is in terrible shape. There's some funk on it, you know, grodies. Look at that, that's grody. You know what? Taco Bell and skin cells. Nasty. Eat that, eat it, you eat it. No, I don't want you to eat that. But we're gonna clean that off. But uh, yeah, watch this. Just with Samantha cleaned up this. Now this is amazing because this is graphite, but doesn't it look like wood grain? It's crazy, right? It is not wood grain. I shall tell you it's not good for me. It is a composite. It is a composite. And I swear to it, I can buff that out and make it shiny. Because I've seen this before. I have another Steinberger. Same stuff. Anyways, these frets look pretty decent as is. I'm probably going to hit this whole thing with a steel wool, some double lot just to get it ready to go, and then I'm going to hit it with some buffing compound and uh, get jamming on this thing, but I'm going to actually polish the frets first because the compound is actually going to be softer than what I'm going to be using on the frets. So, dance, 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 yeah. So you can see right there that is dead 12. It's a perfect 12 inch radius. So now we know what the radius of the fretboard is. And I checked it up on the 24th fret, so it's pretty much the same thing. So that is a 12 inch radius. Not a huge detail, but you would think that these are kind of like these rubber knobs, which actually makes, again, total sense. Because when you're rolling on a knob and you want to have precision you want to have some grip so rubber is better than plastic or anything else because you can really get into it and really feel it and it doesn't slip but it does have a allen key in it you know so you can't just remove them without that little allen key so this thing is uh not just some rare knob or some knob that you can just get it, it's is <laughs> Everything on this guitar is just precisionly made. It's just awesome. Every, everything, even these knobs, were made for him. You know, that's just that's just what's wicked about these guitars, man. It's the paint. It really chips really easy. Um, after I put it back on, I've gotten chips here, really really close chip right there, just from screwing this back in. A little chip right there. Underneath this, got a chip. Around here. And uh, right there, you know, just like a little tiny, just just broke away. Uh, it's an older guitar, of course, but um, it's delicate. Like after it uh, it aged, it got uh, a little fragile. So it's an amazing instrument. There's no doubt. Got a little bit of a scraping to do still. You see a really super 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 fine line, but that uh, it's not going to be a big deal. But it's gorgeous. I guess this would be the time to show you guys how to string the Steinberger. So we're just basically going to start over here. It's pretty basic for this one. This is not the trans trim, but it is an outstanding trim. Again, one of my favorites. Very simple. Just goes right through the back. Very, very easy. It's stuck there. There we go. All right. And then come over here. And this is literally the easiest thing in the world. You just come through a little hole. Loosen that, goes right through there. And that's it. It's 
all you need to do. You just run it straight through. All right, so you can see it's just threaded through this little hole, okay? And then so what you do is you tighten it down in the top. That's it. And then you just rotate. See how it just pulls it straight in? But instead of bending it severely around the pole piece, and it's the easiest and most comfortable thing to turn. So we're going to have to probably pull on that a little bit more. As the strings get longer, they kind of have a little bit too much. And what will end up happening, the only kind of, I wouldn't say it's a design flaw because it's easily fixed if you know how to deal with it. But what happens is the first string will kind of pull on the tremolo and, you know, give it some slack. And then you're going to have to redo the next string. So some of these will be super, super tall and some of them will be like, you know, barely in. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go ahead and just keep, let's go to the A. So now that I've got the uh, the bridge tightened and it's locked, um, the challenge that we see here is we've got a lot of play up and down on these, but right where the high E string gets there, those poles are not as long. It's pretty much at pitch at high E, so I'm not gonna go any higher than that. If anything, I might tune lower. But there's a cool way of actually fixing this. And what you do is you just basically lower the tension because the strings are also held in place and it's not going to be too difficult. You got to be careful not to cut the end. So there's basically no, there's just full slack on the string. So we're going to just take that off. We're going to take a pair of some pliers so we can hold on to the string and pull it through. So we're just going to literally hold the string here, pull or loosen this. You can see as soon as we loosen it, we're going to pull a little bit more slack into it. Pull it this way, and as soon as I tighten it back down, now I got a little bit. And now I'm about halfway down, so I've got probably another eighth of an inch of tuning up and down. So all of these guys are pretty much good. I don't need to go higher or lower for these. I don't really need to go higher or lower for those. Those are plenty. But if you did need to do that, that's kind of a cool trick, but you got to make sure you don't cut the um, cut the line off. Now, I will say this. I've owned this guitar for a very, very, very long time, almost 20 years. I've never broken a string. Uh, and I've had sets of strings on here for well over 10 years, and they have not broken. So you just come down here and clip these guys. The other nice thing is you never get your hands really close to these. So I'm leaving just a little bit of lead. Anyways, so that's a kind of review on the, what the what the tuners actually look like and how they function. Uh, the nut's absolutely fabulous. It's great. It's I mean, it just everything just chimes off this fretboard. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to set the intonation and then we'll give you a review of the sound. All right. So just as far as just listen to this thing intonate, simple G chord. <laughs> sounds like one tone. You don't hear any any kind of oscillation. Even in a D. It's just an A. Regular C. I mean you can just hear there's no woo 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 like a like a I don't know. It's just super accurate. All the chords. It's almost like it's got a buzz beat on it. Play here. It's perfectly in tune. How about in here? just chimes, sustains forever. So even on a kind of a heavy setting.
guitar that has action that low and bending like that. It's pretty rare to actually hear something be able to do that. And that 12 inch radius definitely does help. But um, now that this thing is completely polished, new strings, ready to go, I mean, it's, it's absolutely nanners. So I'll do a full review on it uh, just so you can hear all the different demo sounds and stuff. And then uh, you can also click on this video if you want to look at the uh, uh, White Lion uh, Little Fighter solo that I did on this guitar uh, a few years back. It's a good lesson. Check it out.